In today's video, we're going to talk about that central NAT table and exactly how to use it and what it's really there for. So stay tuned. Hey guys, Mike here from Fortinet Guru. So in a previous video where I was comparing profile mode versus policy mode, I made a statement talking about how in policy mode, a central NAT is required. And I got some people hitting me up via email asking specifically what central NAT was. So in this video, I'm going to dive into central NAT and how to configure it on the FortiGate and, you know, the inner workings of it, if you will. So first things first, central NAT isn't some all mystical being, right? It's, it's actually fairly simple when you think about it. It's a central place where you control the NAT that your device does. And what I mean by that is when you're running in profile mode, you're able to actually control the NAT on the specific policy itself, which is good because you have granularity there, but it also gives you the opportunity to mess up because what if you accidentally shadow a policy with another policy that has a different NAT statement? A device that you intend to have NAT a certain way may not hit the way it should. And the central NAT table basically gives you a single point of view that you're able to use specifically for your NAT address translations so it, it it takes the guesswork out of it, if you will. It gives you the opportunity to set things up exactly how you need it to and run from there. So we're going to dive in on our lab FortiGate and we're going to run through a couple scenarios for it. So we're sitting here, we're logged into our FortiGate. This is a FortiGate run 6.4.1. Now you can run central netting on profile or policy-based mode. Policy-based mode just forces it. But if you want to use this option, you can on profile mode as well. So what we're looking at here is this is a FortiGate that's running in policy mode. Most people don't actually run in policy mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch this over to profile mode because that's the one that most people are used to. Now, central, nat central source netting is already enabled on this because that's how it's configured for policy mode. So we'll go ahead and we'll click OK, switch over to this. So we're logged into our FortiGate. It's running FortiOS 6.4.1. It's a Forti Wi-Fi 61E. It's our homegrown lab unit. First thing you'll notice is that whenever you have central source netting turned on, you can basically just click Policy and Objects, click Central Source Net, and you're listed with a table or something that actually looks like a policy set where you basically build out your NATs. So let's say we have a specific IP that's internal to our network that's going out to the internet. Maybe we're in a situation where we have multiple static IPs on our home connection and we want specific computers to go out with specific addresses. Now, if you look at the policy that's already there, it'll look very familiar. Use outgoing interface address. That's usually what most people end up using on their home FortiGates or their smaller units. So we have use outgoing interface. That's our default, meaning if it doesn't hit before this, it'll do that. So we want to create new, and maybe our incoming interface is inside and our outgoing interface is outside. And our source address, maybe that's, you know, let's set a host here, right? So we'll create this guy. This specific host, when it goes out, we want it to go a certain way. So we'll select all for our destination. We'll define the actual source address that's of interest to us within the uh, policy here. And then we'll select NAT and we'll use a dynamic pool. And just like you would on a normal policy, you would actually select the IP pool that you have created for this. Now, we don't have any created here, but let's just say for the sake of argument that we own 1.2.3.4, that's one of our external IP addresses. So, we've logged in and we need to actually create the dynamic IP pool that'll be used for this. So we're just gonna name it outside IP-1, right? And then we're gonna go 1.2.3.4 to 1.2.3.5. For the sake of this video, we're going to act like we own the 1.2.3.0 slash 24 subnet just for the purpose of uh, our external IPs. It's not the case. 
We're not going to actually run traffic through this, so that's okay. So we create our outside IP. And we have 1.2.3.4 through 1.2.3.5. Those are the two IPs that we want to use for this IP pool. And what that means is if the traffic is coming from the inside interface going to the outside interface from 192.168.1.20, then it's going to NAT it as this particular address. And you click OK. Now you notice it popped up underneath the one that's already there. We need to move this up because this one is our catch-all NAT. I treat this just like I do my firewall policies. I have a catch-all policy at the bottom specifically to make sure everything goes as it should. And that's in situations where there's a lot more relaxed security. Usually, you only want to whitelist what's allowed. And if it doesn't have a policy to allow it, it doesn't go. But for this video, this will suffice. So now let's say we have another one. Maybe it's inside to outside. And it's, you know... 192.168.2, that whole subnet, whenever it's going out to Dropbox. We want it to NAT as something completely different, right? So maybe we want to use a different one. So we just create our policy here. 192.3.4. Click OK. So what this says is if it's inside going to outside and it's from that subnet going to Dropbox, use this specific IP. It seems trivial, but there's a lot of organizations that tie their stuff down by specific IP, especially for certain services. For instance, if you're in a banking situation and you want your stuff to go out via a certain IP because the other side's whitelisted for that IP, you want that stuff to go out as intended or else the connection won't work and you end up in a situation where maybe you get fired because the bank couldn't run its records, right? So, Another thing that you have within this is the ability to do explicit port mapping, which means you can take the original source port and translate it like it's coming from a different source port. We won't need that for this specific one, so we'll just close it out. And we'll move this one up a little bit higher in our catch-all as well. So that covers source netting. But we still have to worry about our virtual IPs or our destination nets, right? Well, they have that covered as well. They actually have a specific table just for destination net as well as virtual IPs. Which, remember, virtual IPs are just destination nets. So you can come in here, go to create new destination net, and you actually notice it says DNAT and virtual IP, that's because they're the same thing. Go to create new, and this is where you would do your external IPs translating in and things along those lines. Or maybe if you had a FortiGate that was on a network where there was some overlap or something like that, maybe the other side is doing that on their end, so you have to, you know, there's a lot of different situations where this makes sense. So we'll say this is mail coming in. And we want 1.2.3.1 to be mapped to 192.168.1.50. Maybe that's our mail server. Now, I like to configure the smallest section possible. And what I mean by that is I want my destination NATs as well as my firewall policies to be as specific as possible. It's just a security best practice from my perspective. Now, you could very well forward all ports for this specific IP, but it doesn't make sense if you only have a limited number of IPs and you may run into a situation where you need to use other ports for something else. For email, maybe this one's only allowing port 25 for SMTP. I know most people are using Office 365 now, but there are situations where it makes sense, right? So we'll do a port forward, and we care about port 25 getting forwarded to port 25 on the inside. Click OK. So that's our destination net now. We, we have it set up, meaning that any traffic that's trying to go to 1.2.3.1, it's going to translate to 192.168.1.50 as long as that external port is TCP 25. All right, guys, so that's pretty much the short and sweet of central source netting as well as destination net slash virtual IPs. 
it's basically just a single spot for you to deal with it. And then outside of that, you use your policies the way you always have. It is a little bit to get used to because you're not using your policies to actually build out your NATs as you intend, but instead using that central NAT policy set. But it does give you a very, very granular look. How many times have you been in a situation where you're digging through your firewall policy trying to figure out why a certain IP is getting natted a certain way? Well, central source natting and destination natting can help solve that. Or, I mean, you could learn how to debug and find out what policy specific traffic's hitting, which we'll dive into later, so you can at least use the way you're used to, but with a little bit more specificity, right? So guys, hopefully you found this video helpful. I know it's been a while since I've done a video that actually gave you a walkthrough on how to do something. I've been asked to actually crank those back up. Let's face it, the other videos are good for views, but it kind of takes away from what the channel should be doing. So I'm going to try to keep it more 80-20, with 80% being the actual how-tos, 20% being the actual drama and do stuff that makes people go, hmm, maybe Fortinet should change that, or hmm, maybe other vendors should. Anyways, if you like the video, do me a favor. Hit the like button on the video, as well as hit the subscribe button and notify bell. The like button helps the video out, it helps other people find it that may have these questions, and the subscribe and notify bell helps you out. It helps keep you up to date whenever I release new videos. So until next time guys, stay safe. Thank you.